Okay, today we are doing a tube and tire change of the Apollo Phantom. Um, this works for all models. This model happens to be the V3, but uh, I got a flat uh, tire um, on the rear tube, so I'm gonna be replacing that today. So let's get right into it. All right, we got the scooter over here. These are the tools you're gonna need for the tire change. So we have a five and a four mil Allen key. We have a 21 mil socket with a socket wrench. The socket wrench you don't actually need. You can just use a regular adjustable wrench like this. It's just gonna be for this one right here. So don't worry if you don't have a socket wrench, you can use a regular wrench. Um, you're gonna need a pump, obviously, to pump up the tube. You're gonna need the tube, of course. Gloves, you know, just to not get your hands dirty. And the drill is also optional. You can just use the Allen keys. This just makes it a bit faster. And then obviously you need the corresponding five and four mil Allen bits, but it's pretty much at the base, it's three tools, a five, a formula Allen, and a wrench. It's extremely simple. Anyone can do this. You don't need any type of mechanic skills. I especially don't have them. And let's get straight to it. All right, we're going to start by taking off this caliper. It's just going to um, make sure that we don't end up uh, bending the disc when we take off the tire. So you're going to want to make sure the scooter is folded on the table or whatever you're using to sit it up just for even weight distribution so it doesn't tip over, of course. You're going to take your 5 mil Allen key and you're going to get started on these two bolts right here. I'll show a bit closer. It's going to be these two bolts. So, set up here and I'm just going to take those off. You want to do even pressure on both bolts. Just like with everything, you don't want to strip the screws. So. Okay, now the second one is out. So, these two screws put to the side, then you're gonna wanna lift the caliper off the disc and just put it laying to the side, just put it down there, let it hang, and um, now we're gonna move on to the bolts. Okay, now grab your 21 mil socket or adjustable wrench, get it on that bolt, make sure this is facing the right way, and make sure the scooter isn't gonna move and push down once and just to get it loose you can do it again and then before you take it all the way out just do the other side just to keep the even pressure so i'm going to do it on the opposite side yeah there we go oh, almost. there we go first one's off second one is off okay now there's gonna be two locking rings, uh, one on each side. So go ahead and um, pull that out. There we go. Take the second locking ring out. Okay, before we uh, move this all the way out, there is a little bracket here holding this motor cable in. So take a two and a half mil Allen key and just loosen that. In. Okay, so now that the bracket and screw are off, put those to the side, you're just going to want to bring it up top, and you put it up on the deck so that you can freely work on the rotor. Okay, so you should have your two nuts, you should have two locking washers, the washer for the fender, fender piece, and screw for the bracket, and two caliper screws. You take your 4 mil Allen, and you're going to come over here to the rotor, and you're going to loosen each screw keep the tension even you don't want anything wrecking just do a quick half turn get the four mil and make sure it's in reverse and oh it might not work and bring it out slowly if it is interfering and just remove all six okay now we take the brake rotor disc off Set that down, and now we're gonna do the six. Don't do the motor screws. Um, do the uh, or these six outer ones that's on the split rim. Okay, if you have short Allen keys like this one with not much torque, try switching to a screwdriver with the bit that I was using on the drill. Um, and we're gonna try that. So hopefully, it's 
Okay, now let's try this and hope it works. Oh yeah, no problem. Perfect. And now you're going to do this to each one. Cut. Just pull up the split rim. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know what a split rim does, it just makes it easier to pull the tire off versus trying to shimmy it with tire levers and everything. So put that down. Okay, now with the rim off, you're just gonna. Oh, also, if I didn't mention this before, I mean this one already. I already let the air out, but let the air out in the tube um, to make this easier, of course. And you're literally just gonna pop up the tire and it is that simple there we go okay now that the tire is off we're gonna just take the inner tube off or take it out and oh, it's gonna be a little dirty that's why you should probably be wearing gloves set the tire down and then you'll switch the tube okay i had a few problems with the uh inner tube i bought i just bought the wrong size that's my fault so i eventually just repaired this one anyways um, so when you fill the lining you're gonna want to pump it up just so okay, sorry when you put the tube in you want to pump it up just so the outer lining is filled like this perfectly give it a little massage so that it's all set properly and now you're gonna move it over to where that hole is you want to line it up with the valve of course so you want to slot it back and with a split rim it's super easy so drop it in and make sure it aligns give it a flip to make sure the valve comes up that angle that side and we're good put the uh, split rim back in there and then you're going to want to slot these screws in don't tighten them down just yet make sure they all fit properly make sure they all get aligned and then you're gonna to wanna to slowly go with your drill. Okay, now that you have them mostly tightened down, you just wanna go ahead and finish it with the Allen key just to make sure nothing gets stripped. Okay, now that all the screws are fastened down, you want to take your rotor, make sure the number, the 160, is facing down towards the motor. Uh, line them up, and then you're going to put all of these screws back in. Okay, rotor is on and fastened. Now we're going to drop it down and slot it in the locking rings. Okay, I chose to not put the fender bracket back on just because I don't use rear fenders usually, but if you need, then you can put that on the left side. I'm going to put the locking ring, and we're going to put that up there. Put the locking ring on this side. And... Okay, now the locking ring's in. Make sure it's slotted, and you can start. Just twist down your nut. Don't tighten it yet, and then we'll shift to the other side. Just repeat it on the other side. Okay, after you tighten these down with your socket wrench or your regular adjustable wrench, um, then you can grab the caliper. You can dust it off if you need, doesn't really matter too much. Twist it the right way, and you're going to slot it on and have it obviously in line with the screws. I don't actually know how, so cut until I can figure it out. Okay, this is future Jamie editing the video here right now, and there's one thing I forgot to mention which is really crucial, and that's where I messed up right there with the caliper. You wanna put that washer that is with the fender piece on the left side of the scooter that will make enough spacing to um, put the caliper on correctly. So put that washer, um, beside the locking ring on the left side of the scooter. 
and that will give you enough room to put the caliper on and then the brake rotor will be good to go. Okay, so we're gonna tighten that down. Just before you tighten it down, go one last check, make sure the rotor is centered with the brake pad. And crank it down just so there's no movement. And you should be good to go. The only last step is just pump up the tire and then you're rolling.